tonight we're going to talk about a very fun subject. Um, I'm just going to call it toxic femininity because I have nothing else to say and I thought it was kind of funny because, you know, toxic masculinity is something that's going around today. Did so, do what? Did we talk about toxic No, we talked about um, that thing with the uh, judgment of God was God justified with Job. Um, it's available on my YouTube if you are interested. Um, before we get going, Lord, I just pray that you'd uh, help us to see things how you want them to be seen and, and help us to uh, uh, to to go to this with an open mind and, and, and help me to say what needs to be said in the right way and uh, that we would have a healthy uh, conversation about this tonight. Amen. Amen. Um, so our culture, you know, obviously is heated up about a lot of different things. I mean, you don't really have to have, to have me tell you that. Um and they, they try to make you think that everything is an either-or kind of thing. Like, um, you're either an idiot or you believe what we say. And then, so then Christians, where do Christians stand? Well, Christians have to kind of take sides, right? And, you know, it makes it where you're the bad guy or you have to agree with the liberals. You know what I mean? And so then that takes us to things like transgenderism and stuff. Well, how does... How do Christians engage with that? Well, all of a sudden we have to be condoning it and agreeing with it. And yes, it's it's totally fine. And when you when you take these pills and you cut off your penis, it makes you a woman. All these things. But then at the same time, we're told to respect women, even though a woman is nothing separate or unique. Well, how can you truly respect something if you don't see it as separate and unique? You know. And so Christians are are, are put into this mold, and we just oh we have to. And the thing is, that's not really what Christianity is meant to be. It's not supposed to go to either or. It's supposed to kind of exist outside of what the culture is hung up about because eventually this whole transgender thing and toxic masculinity femin feminism and all this stuff eventually it will no longer be the dominant thing the culture will find something else to be pissed off about but christian truth can't just change like that it, it has to be something eternal or else it's not christian truth it's just my own whims and so whereas there was a generation of Christians who thought that they had to be Republican, now it's kind of gone to the other swing, and Christians kind of feel like they have to be uh, liberals, that they have to go with all this different stuff. And it's, it's, it's amazing to me because of how nonsensical this whole thing has gotten. Take, for instance, um, all this stuff about w with the woke movement about trying to get black people their own, their own teams and their own, own this and their own that. And it's like we tried so hard to get rid of segregation, and now we're trying to bring it back. And now as Christians, where are we supposed to stand? Do we stand with this new movement to bring back segregation in the name of wokeness? Or do we stand against it and say, no, or do we kind of just exist outside of it? And I think that our option is that third one. We just kind of exist outside of it. Because there's, we, we don't have to get wrapped up in every single conflict that the world gets. You know what I mean? Like they're having a bunch of fights and they're trying to invite us into that fight. We don't have to, we don't have to join that fight. So tonight I want to look more at how to think biblically about this because there's very little Christian thinking and Christian interaction going on. It's kind of an either-or kind of thing. Oh, CNN says this and Fox News says this. I'm joining the debate on this side or this side. And it's like, I don't think that that's the right move. <clears throat> so before I get even get going on this, women are just as smart and in some ways just as capable. You can't obviously say that they're just as capable as men because that's not true. Just as men aren't, aren't just as capable as women. Right, I mean that's just that's just foolishness. Um, are men just as capable as uh, uh, as women are of, for instance, producing a a baby from their body? No, men are incapable of that. Right, I mean we right, come on. So you can't say that women are just as capable as men because they're each capable of their own things. And, and then we, let's also clarify another little little term before we even get going. Equality. This is something that everybody's talking about right now. Oh, equality, equality, equality. Here's the thing, men and women are not equal. You don't have to like that, but that's the way it is. Equal means same. Okay. Men and women cannot be the same because they're not the same. Okay. So that needs to be something that, that, that we just admit here from the beginning. I mean, think, for instance, of all the female Olympians. Very talented people. They, they work really hard at a goal. And if you pit those same women who have dedicated their lives to this up against the men Olympians, who's going to win? Well, the men Olympians. I mean, it's not even a, it's not even fair. Why? Because men's muscle is different. It forms different. Testosterone in the brain works differently than it does in a woman. Like it just all these different basic concepts. And 
the thing is, this isn't about an opinion. This is about science. And so that's where the science takes us. And so there, as Christians, we're not just leaning on science. We're leaning on what the Bible says. And the Bible says that God created us to be male and female. He created us to be different. So there's some things that people think of as being inherently manly and some things as being inherently womanly. Like, for instance, crying. Crying is inherently womanly. Well, not really. When men are emotional, they are emotional in a different way than when women are emotional. It's hard to explain but they process it differently, and they go about it differently. Here's another little thing, is when men are backed into a corner, eventually their inner man will, man will eventually come out. You know what I mean? Even if you have the most beta, um, sub, submissive male in the world, you, you, keep, you keep hammering it away at him, and eventually he'll get pissed off enough for that lion to come out. Eventually. You just have to put him in the right situations. Women, however, they don't really have that inner man inside. I mean, even if they're a manly type, manly quote unquote type of woman, they're still not the same. Their brain doesn't, see what I mean? All you got is a short tempered woman. Okay. But that doesn't make her a man. Like that just makes her short tempered. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, there's, there's a lot of different things that make us all unique, but to say that a man is a woman and a woman is man, I think is, is not getting very help, very helpful. So, okay. There are some things men cannot do as good as women, and some things women cannot do as well as men. So now that we've gotten all that out of the way, let's start talking about toxic masculinity, the hot topic of the day. Um, so what is usually meant when people talk about toxic masculinity? First off, it's usually uh, feminists who, are, who say this. Feminists, um, the idea of feminism is um, that men and women would be treated the same, also called female equality. Which, once again, is, is there's inherently something wrong with that definition, but I'll move on past that because I've already mentioned that. So, typically, feminists are the ones who are talking about toxic masculinity. And the problem is, is that they don't actually, they aren't able to actually articulate what is non-toxic masculinity. And so, then they also don't take into consideration, well, what does it mean to be a toxic feminine, uh, toxically feminine? And... That's not really something that's even addressed at because women have been mistreated throughout the most. Okay, and here's the thing. That's actually not true either. I know it's everybody in our culture believes that women are more mistreated than men, but I'm not sure that we see that. Let's take, for instance, um, individual rights, individual human rights. How did men get individual human rights? Anybody, anybody tell me from history, not from your opinion, from history, how did men get their rights? No, 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 no. I mean, I mean, like, what what did men have to do in order to, to well, take we individual wars. rights? And yes, no. kings said no. You do what we say, and then the enlightenment enlightenment comes along. And what did men have to do to get their rights? They went to war. They had to fight. They had to kill. This went on for a long time. Have you ever heard of the first French Revolution? The second French Revolution. The third no. French Revolution. So this is what happened in just, just in France, one country. Revolution finally gets rid of the king. They have a bunch of corrupt leaders. Napoleon takes over. A king takes over again. Napoleon takes over again. See what I mean? And we have this long history of, you know, people, men having to fight and kill each other to get their individual rights. Now, what did women have to do to get their, their individual rights? Anybody? No. What? Pick it. That is what women had to do to get their individual rights. Men had already loosened the, the fight. They'd already done the groundwork. Men, women were only able to get their individual rights because of the wars that men had fought. So when you say women have had it wor harder than men, that's not overly accurate. People have had it hard. People. All people have had it hard. This world hasn't played favorites. <laughs> okay, so if you're trying to say that maybe men have abused women, yes, I would agree with that. There have been very many instances when men have dominated over women because men are more of the muscular and dominant ones so it's easier for them to take advantage of a girl i would totally admit i would, I would agree to that yes it's more common for instance for a man to rape a woman yes women do women have raped men before i, I know i know that it's more common for a man to rape a woman though because they have the body for it it's easier for them to pin a woman down than it's for a woman to pin a man down not only that but it's also goes along with, once again, that whole testosterone frying their brain thing. Men are more um, impulsive than women. Um, men tend to be more violent than women. Um, these are things that women can have, too. Yeah, you can have a, woman, a violent woman, especially one who has gone through a sexual trauma as a child. 
but as a man, it's part of their DNA. You know what I mean? Here's a good example. My son was sitting over here doing something. It was irritating Teresa. So Teresa told him very rudely to stop. And so he didn't stop. Why? Well, just because he's a brat. No, that's just something that men do. Whenever men feel like they're backed up against a wall, they fight back. It's just something that is inherent in, 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 in malehood. It's, it's, it's that, you know, that fight or fight thing. Women are, women are more prone to fly. Men are more, more prone to fight. They'll just, like, they'll just get stubborn, stupid stubborn. And so even to the point of, but you're kind of hurting yourself. Like, why don't you just back off? A man, a man will still like, don't tell me to back off. You, you know, it's like, okay, all right, buddy. All right. See you know what I mean? Like, now once again, not all men do that. I understand that. But we're talking about generally here. So toxic masculinity, which usually meant is men acting like men. And so what they mean is women, men need to act more effeminate, more submissive, more non-aggressive. Yeah, good luck with that. I mean, you're, you're not going to be able to take the men out of men. I mean, right now, men are kind of going along with it. But if women keep up this, this routine of, of, of talking down to men and saying about how, how toxic they are and, you know, mistreating, not mistreating them, that's not what I mean to say, but, like, you know, trying to yell them down and stuff, eventually there's going to be blowback. Why? Because that's in a man's nature. Men's nature is to fight. And did you ever wonder why every single empire was built by men? Did you ever wonder why Napoleon Barnabart was a man and not a woman? Because that's in a man's nature to conquer. And women don't have that. I mean, yeah, you can have some women who, you know, get something going, but it, it's different. And women are more sustainers and men are more builders and founders. I mean, it's just different. You know, who, who builds bridges? Mostly men. I mean, it's just, it's just, that's the way their brain, you know, and it's not that a woman can't do it. It's that a woman doesn't have much desire to do it. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I was reading a book and it was about this wonderfully accomplished woman. Um, she traveled around the entire world uh, in, I, oh, I should have written it down, I believe it was um, 69 days after the, that book by Jules Verne was, was published, she, she traveled around the world. And um, so then they turned it into a kid's book. And in the kid's book, they constantly made it a thing about women versus men. Oh, she did it even though the men, and it's like, well, hold on. So basically what you're saying is that women only have value in comparison to a man. And that, I, I, I complained about the book. I said, it's a little bit of a man-hater book. And so this feminist is like, what, 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 do you, what do you have a problem with? And I said, because I don't want my daughter to get, a, to get that idea that she's only worth anything as compared to a man. And not only that, but if you read the original memoir from that woman, it wasn't her against men, okay? The, the guy, who, the guy who, who first got her her job, a man. The one who vouched for her to go on the trip, a man. The, I mean, all these different things that men had benefited her, and that's the way it should be, men and women benefiting each other. But the kids' adaptation, they made it into a thing about women against men. It's like, but you're missing the point. A woman has to have value all by herself, not in comparison to a man. But feminists make it where, it's, where they only have value if it's in comparison to a man. Like, how is that helping the problem? Like, well, even though men said it couldn't be done, and she did it even though men, it's like, you're missing the point here. She did a, an amazing thing. Like, she traveled around the whole world in this record time, and she had barely had any any suitcase, any luggage with her. I mean, it was amazing what she did. Another thing she did was she infiltrated a uh, mental asylum as a patient. She was a phenomenal uh, reporter. She uh, went into this mental asylum as a patient, and she uncovered a bunch of, uh, of malpractice that was going on. Amazing feat. Not for a woman... Not as compared to men, amazing feat. She was a great journalist. End of story. You don't have to make it a comparison against men. But for whatever reason, nowadays we live in this culture where it's always like, oh, and I know exactly what it is, and you can disagree with me all you want, but it's this is what it is. It's demonic. And you might say, oh, what do you mean? Well, let me explain. When, when the fall came, what was the consequence of sin, consequence of sin men and women being against each other? So now our culture is pushing it all the more, trying to double down. Keep fighting against each other. Keep fighting. That, that, that butting heads. See, Christ brings unity. So if this is just continually butting heads, what does that tell you? That it's not of Christ. <laughs> he wants us to be, like what does Galatians say? There's no longer slave or free, male or woman, you know, Jew or Gentile. There's, there's no more of this. We're all, we've all been redeemed in Christ. But instead of that, our culture has something different. So right there we see that what is consuming our culture goes very strongly against what the Bible is teaching us. 
And I think that that right there should be our first warning flag. When we're, we're in more part of things like social things like Facebook and stuff, and there's all these people shooting off their, their, their trap about things that they're really upset about. So first off, they're not presenting knowledge in a, in a wise way. They're just kind of ranting. But then when they're not concerned about, excuse me, about unity or the gospel or those kinds of things, they're concerned about getting right or getting my fair share. And it's like, well, that's not really bringing, that's not really bringing anything. And um, so I, I honestly feel like feminism is kind of doomed to failure because in order for femininity, feminism to really survive, it needs men to support it. See what I mean? Because women don't have the power in of themselves to overcome men and dominate men. See what I mean? If it comes down to blows, well, obviously men would win. Duh. I mean, duh. I mean, look at domestic violence. Who's the main perpetrator of domestic violence? Men! <laughs> Who are the ones who typically get the black eyes? Women! Like, this isn't like a surprise. Like, see what I mean? Like, feminism only stands if men can support it. But the, the whole idea of feminism is female superiority to men. And that's not that's not what Christ wants. Christ doesn't want us to, to, to keep... Yeah, maybe feminism didn't start out like that. I'm not talking about the history. I'm talking about modern feminism. So... Um, many men try to prove a point by going to the other extreme. So I'm not going to be some some sissy. So then they just get short-tempered, emotionally retarded, um, and, and violent. What I mean by emotionally retarded? Unable to, to deal and handle with your emotions. That can look in one of two extremes. Number one, a male who is eternally um, angry at everything, pissed off at everything, attacking everything. Or a, a male who is so insecure that he is constantly, oh, okay, all right, yeah. That's emotionally retarded. That's not how a man is supposed to be and act. Um, I would say that for the majority of my, um, my, 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 when I was a kid, I tried to be um, just out of the way peacemaker. When I was a teenager, I tried to be, you know, just kind of, oh, okay. But then as I got older and went in ministry longer and longer, it actually caused a bigger problem because when I finally started standing up for myself, I went to the other extreme and started turning kind of violent, you know. And there was one, there was one time, uh, actually a couple months back, where somebody was giving me a problem, and I almost punched him in the face. I was like, I, I, I was this close to saying, do you want me to punch you in the face? And this was at church, okay? This is, this is not like, a, I'm not saying this was a good, a good thing. This is not like I was a hero of the story. That's not what I'm saying at all. See, the, the, what's the cure to toxic masculinity? It's something that Peterson calls um, responsible masculinity. You're not going to change what a man is. A man, yes, is more, is more prone to violence and, and all these different things, but that doesn't have to be a bad thing. The, the solution to toxic masculinity is responsible masculinity, being in control of it, learning discipline. The problem is that there's a bunch of boys nowadays who do drugs, sleep, or sleep around, and have no self-control. They just do whatever they want, whenever they want, and they still call themselves men, even though they're acting like children. And then they're having kids. And they're not there for their kids, so their kids don't know what the hell a man is supposed to be anyways. There's something that happens in a man in a grown man's in a in a grown man's mind when he doesn't have a job, when he's not providing, when he's not disciplined, when he when he does whatever he wants whenever he wants, just plays video games all day, or sleeps all day, or eats all day, or fill in the blank, you know, whatever. When a man gets into that, it does something to his brain and it's like here's his here's his his potential, and this is what happens. There's something amazing that happens when a man, especially a man, more so than a woman. I will say this, more so than a woman. When a man gets a job, there's something that changes up here. When, when, he, when he starts going to, work, going to work every day and has that stress of, of a job, especially like an eight-hour, 40-hour week job, eight-hour day, 40-hour week job, there's something that happens in your brain and it starts changing how you, how you interact and you're able to more control your emotions. Men weren't supposed to be sitting on their, on their, on their butts doing nothing. There's something inside of us that, that wasn't made for that, you know. And I think that's one of the big problems is because men, men nowadays are sitting at home, watching TV all day, doing drugs all day, not providing for anybody, complaining about stuff. That kills your madness. I mean, people, I know, I know we talk about uh, what lowers your testosterone levels and stuff. I don't know if it lowers your testosterone yeah. levels, but it sure does lower your, your masculinity. <laughs> um, so... Here's some things that are not toxic for men. Standing your ground. There's nothing toxic about standing your ground. Not going to emotional pieces every time there's a conflict. Protecting and fighting worthwhile fights instead of just fighting. 
So you can always tell if, if a man is um, is has a purpose in his life or not by by the quality of fights that he fights. Every man fights, but a man that doesn't have a purpose fights things that don't matter. The the, the pointless fights, you know, like they'll they'll fight somebody in the streets and just punch him in the face. You know, thing, things like that. It won't be like a fight for something that that person who I almost punched in the face, they were being rude and, and, and hateful and they called themselves a Christian. That pisses me off. I have, I, have, I have a serious problem with that. Obviously, it's not okay for me, for me to punch them in the face. I'm not trying to say that it is. But when you're a Christian, you need to learn how to shut your mouth. Like, you go around causing problems all the time? Nah. Huh. You, you, do, you do that, then don't bother calling yourself a Christian. Anyways, um, providing instead of being provided for. There's something hap that happens once again in a man's brain when he is on welfare or the state is providing for him versus when he is providing for somebody else. You will never find a man more happy and more content in life than when he is not on welfare but is rather working, getting money, and providing for somebody else. That is what a man was made to do. A man was, was meant to protect and provide. When you see a man that doesn't 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 protect and provide for his wife and for his kids, he will not be happy. Promise, promise. It will be all about his pleasure, and he'll always go through life life wondering what what am I missing? Like I'm just not happy. I'm not content. There's something more out there. Yeah, there's something more. Get off your butt and get to work. Well, I don't want to get tied down to a job that, that that's not important. Don't worry about it. Just work. <laughs> Anything. Your manness is 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 responsible. I will say this more so than a woman. Yes, I think if you're a single woman, you should probably get a job. Yes, absolutely. But I know that as a man, from experience, a man without a job is never a good thing. So um, men were also meant to explain and train that just part of who it was. It's not about women can't do it on their own. It's about men often want to express and do rather than words. See, how, how do women how do women um, interact with people? Words. Yes. How do men interact with people? Do. We do. See what I mean? Women talk, we do. That's that's just something that happens. How, why is it more common in churches for to have a gossip group that's all girls? Because girls love talking. Now, do men gossip? Yes, men gossip. Of course men gossip. Everybody gossips. But it's more common to have a gossip circle with women because women just... Blah, 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 blah. Men don't think like that. They wh There's this, there's this thing in, in psychology that they teach you that, that men and women have X amount of words. And once you read that, reach that X amount of words, you're just kind of done. Women don't really have that that word cap. Like their their word cap their word cap is so high that it's like they, they talk about it all the time. Now, with that being said, addendum. Things have changed since COVID. There's 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 this new kind of phenomenon that's kinda of happening where you block yourself off so much it actually retards your social development to where even women are having a hard time connecting with others. So that's something different. That's just the only way to break through that, and that's not a healthy development, by the way. The only way to break through that is by getting out and making more friends. But that's a, that's an aside. Back to the main thing. Men can literally go all day without talking to their wife and not see anything wrong. All day. Like, all day. They'll, they'll wake up in the lake. Especially after you've been married for a couple of years. <laughs> when you're dating, you know, you like talking about everything. You know. But then, you know, after the honeymoon is over, like... Okay, all right, got it. She's still talking. Okay, shut up. And then, oh, you told me shut up. It's like I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, but she just won't stop talking. You know, that's more of a man thing. You know what I mean? They just get eh. something else too that I saw this a couple years ago. Women are more of a process. <laughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> Can you say it again? What? Women are more of a verbal process. Okay. We more talk our thoughts out. Loud. Yeah. That's another thing is oftentimes, not all the time, but oftentimes when a man has really bad um, news, he'll just kind of sit there and zone out. He'll, he, he's more It's more common for a man to just go to work day after day when they're in a mentally bad place and just kind of go through the motions over and over and over again. Whereas a woman is more prone to, you know, how does it make you feel and stuff? It's like, I don't want to talk about it. Why are you cutting me out? It's like, I'm not cutting you out. I don't want to talk about it. Why are you mad at me? I'm not. You know, it's like, and, and men have no problem with that one word answer. No. Are you mad? No. But for a woman, are you mad? No, I'm not mad at it. See, I mean, they want the long explanation. They want to explain why are you talking short and all this different stuff. And they just process things differently. So, um, what? And if a woman asks you if you're mad, then you say no. And that's kind of like. They'll just assume that you're mad. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know. 
I know. Uh, by the way, it gets worse when you're married, just FYI. Um, everybody thinks that they marry the person that they date. They don't. Um, how do how do roosters act? Think about this. How do how do roosters act? Have you ever seen? A, have you guys ever had a flock of chickens? No. Okay. Well, let me kind of walk you through it. Um, you'll have about like twelve or fourteen chickens that a rooster will be like over. It'll be like his flock. And so what he'll do is he'll walk amongst them and have his you know foreplay throughout the day. <laughs> uh, but then he'll be doing this thing where he sticks his head up like this and kind of just. And everybody thinks that, oh, he's just he's just being prideful. But actually what he's doing is he's watching for predators. And another thing that he's doing is making sure that his flock is taken care of because he sounds the alarm when something bad is happening. So the rooster's doing all this, but all that you can tell is him with his head going like that. Yeah. And, and it makes it look like he's doing this real prideful thing. And here's the thing, it's just part of their nature. That's just who a rooster and that's just what a rooster is. You can't honestly say that a rooster is prideful because it's it's an animal. Hmm. They strut not out of arrogance, but they sh they strut to show their dominance. They, that's just how Rooster is. He wants to show, like, okay, this is my flock, and, 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 and that's a good thing because it lets the other roosters know, hey, you know, back up off, you know, and he protects the hens. This is a good thing. Um, both sexes, and, and 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 so I think that you kind of get what I'm saying with with, this, with men and men and women, but. Let me just say this: uh, both sexes, men and men and women, they're they're both complex, and they cannot be simplified to these are male traits and these are female traits. And I think that's th there's there's two problems with a kid who says that he is a boy that says that he's a girl. First off, he wants to do something that's traditionally um, a girl thing, like maybe sew or play with a doll. Um, the second thing is he wants to get more attention. You never actually see in psychology, you never actually see a little boy who is a little girl on in, in, in the inside. There's just, scientifically, there's zero basis for that. I know people say that there's basis for that nowadays. That there's there's not. There, there's, there's zero scientific proof for that. That's what the two situations where you find a little boy saying that he thinks he's a little girl. Well, a third. Somebody says something and he just assumes that they're right because they're an adult. Kids are very impressionable. He sees a girl getting attention, and he wants to get attention. He wants to do the things that are deemed by those around him as a girl activity. Do any of those things make him a girl? No. See, it's okay. It's okay to be a boy and not feel super masculine. That doesn't. That's not what makes you a boy. It's okay to be a boy and feel super delicate. That's 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 not what makes you what makes you a boy. We're gonna look at this later. What makes somebody a boy? What makes them a girl? Just hold on. We'll get there. So there's this whole idea of, of feminism down with the patriarchy, right? Because because white males are are responsible for every every problem in the world today, and uh, that is extremely naive. And um, I wish we could really look into that. We really don't have time to look into that. But um, it's not an accident that men have established all the major empires in the world. I've already mentioned this. They have the drive to conquer and achieve in them. It's just something that's that's a part of them. Women dominantly, not always, but dominantly, will never find satisfaction throughout life by emotional deadness and repetitive mental tasks. What I mean by that, when a, when a woman goes and gets a job and, and tries to you know, establish herself in the work community, the, typically we see very few women who are satisfied throughout the course of their life. It happens, but very few of them remain satisfied through the course of their life. Mo women typically find much more joy and happiness, statistically, through having a family. Statistically, women are much more happier, especially as they age, when they've um, created a family rather than created a, a, a job, for a lifetime job. By statistics. Obviously, there will be the women who are more, more happy to, you know, Right, right. Um, another way of saying this that I that I thought of myself, and it, it's not a perfect thing, but it's it's near enough. Women sustain empires, men create them. The issue is not women are incapable of leadership. See that whenever you talk about women's women's roles and men's roles, it sounds like you have you have your place, get in your place, find your place, woman. Like I'm kind of trying to force a woman into a corner, and. That's kind of an unhealthy way of looking at it. The, the, the issue is not women are incapable of leadership. Women can lead in the church, and women can lead, lead in the world. It can happen. That's not the issue. 
And I don't even think that it's a wrong thing. I've actually advocated for women being pastors um, uh, on the board, uh, in leadership in general. I've advocated for that through almost all of my years in ministry. I've always advocated that. And I disagree strongly with, with, with other people who I've worked closely with who do not agree with this. And they'll even use scripture to prove their point that women shouldn't be in leadership. And I have refuted those scriptures and, and shown that that's not what they're talking about time and time again. I am not somebody who thinks that women have no place in leadership. The issue is that men get lost in work because they desire respect and to conquer. Women don't. Women might get lost in work, but they don't get lost in work with the same motives. Even when women do similar things, they have different motives. Men aren't just the conqueror. They are also power hungry naturally. They also are capable of muscling girls out of the way. Because of the fall, there will always be a struggle between the sexes. The gospel seeks to bring peace and unity there instead, and the world seeks to bring dominance and vengeance instead. Those are, those are, the, those are the way of it. Now, with that being said, no, no, I think I'll skip on that. I don't want to belabor my points here. Whoever is in power will fail. And so, whereas, yes, you can point to the patriarchy, which is, you know, white male leaders, um, as a problem throughout history, but keep in mind that anybody who was in that position would have been a problem. Because, once again, power corrupts. Whenever, whoever is in power, they will fail. Um, some men are monsters, but not all are monsters, these kinds of things. So, where does the gospel fit in? The biggest issue that we're facing in this in this whole conversation about the roles of men and women is, and, and let me just say this, okay, not all women should be housewives. We're good with that. Not all women should be housewives. Some women should stay single. I would say this, if you're not emotionally secure enough to be single, you shouldn't get married. Uh, that's the first thing I'll say. The second thing I'll say, if you are not happy and content being single, you should not be married. That's the second thing I'd say. And that's from experience, both in ministry and with myself. The next thing I'll say is that being single isn't that bad. Yeah, there's this idea among single people that being married is like this dream come true. All your problems will be solved. It's, no, that's not true. You know, um, being married is a lot of work, a lot of problems. And you have to decide if those if that's those are the problems that you want to have. Your life is going to be filled with problems. But you have to ask yourself, are those the problems that I want to have? There's a lot more drama that happens. Me, I'm glad I got married. That's That was the way for me. But there's a lot of people who want to get married out there who should not be getting married. There's a lot of people who are trying to stay single. And I'm going to see them get married one day. Ben, I'm just kidding. I'm just joking. Um, but... Uh, yeah. So the biggest issue with all of this, and with the, where does the gospel fit in? The biggest issue is men sleeping around and not being protectors, but takers. That's the biggest issue. From that problem, men not acting like men comes most every other problem. Okay, let, let, me, let me explain what I mean. A generation grew up without fathers. Why? Because men were sleeping around, not being protectors, but takers. Men were not meant to be meant to be takers, they were meant to be protectors. Instead of being there and establishing a relationship with a woman, oh no, it's totally fine to have sex before marriage. We can sleep around all we want. Okay. Well let's see what happened twenty years later. They got those girls pregnant, they broke up, and the woman had to raise the kid just like by herself. And so then those kids grew up without a dad. They have no idea what a dad looks like. They have no idea what men are supposed to look like. So now they grow up and they're embittered towards dads. And their why their their moms are are, are, are man haters because they've only been in relationships with in relationships with bad men. And so where you go with that? Well, now you have men who are acting like women. They're acting emotionally charged. They're not able to ta to to make um 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 res responsible decisions. They're not able to think logically. They are manipulators. They're 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 moved by emotion too much. They um they 
are just takers. They're okay with being on Social Security, all, not Social Security, welfare all, all day, uh, and, and, and food stamps and all these things. They, they don't want to have kids because they don't want anything to interrupt their life. Uh, they do nothing but go to the gym because they're obsessed with their own self. They're just in love with themselves. They play video games all day. They watch Netflix all day. All their whole life revolves around themselves. Those aren't men. Those are boys in, in male bodies. They, they, they have not grown up. That right there is the biggest issue. It's raised a, a, a generation of people who do that. It's raised a generation of women who are very bitter towards men. The modern feminist movement, most of them have, have not had active fathers who loved them. And those who did have active fathers have been in a terrible relationship with the guy who slept with them and left. The problem right there, all of it stems from <coughs> men not acting like men. That's it. There's something that happens when men sleep around. Do not sleep with someone who you are not married to. Men, I'm looking at you. Do not sleep with someone who you are not married to. There are consequences. It makes kids grow up with a warped view of men and makes women see all men differently. Men are to be, this is something that the gospel teaches us that men and women are supposed to be. Let me just focus more on men, though. Because there's this idea that for a man to be a man, he has to be short-tempered and, and hit people a lot. And yell, obviously. Well, that's not true. The Bible tells us that a man can still be a man and be quiet, gentle, patient, patient in control of his emotions in, in, in either extreme, either overly mad or overly, you know, um, uh, what's it called? Um, insecure. Um, with the rain on his tongue, encouraging with godly speech, lovers of their wife. You know what the hardest thing is for a man to give to a woman? Anybody? The hardest thing for a man to give a woman In which way? Another way of saying that? Another way of saying that? Love. Another way of saying that is love. See, men, because of their conquering nature, they always look for bigger and better. That's why men are more prone to porn. They always want something more. It's always a challenge. People who are on porn and then get married so that they won't look at porn anymore always end up going back to porn every single time, 100% of the time. Never been a time. There's never been a time when a man who was on porn got married and then got off of porn because he got married. Never happens. Even if he's able to give it up for a little bit, he always goes back to it. Give it three years, fast forward in time, go to that same guy, he will be married and looking at porn. It's the only way it happens because the issue has not been resolved. So... The biggest problem that a man has giving his wife is love. What is the hardest thing that a woman has, hard, the hardest problem that a woman, the hardest struggle that a woman has to give to his, her husband? The hardest thing. There we go. What's the hardest thing for a woman to give to her husband? Respect. respect. Women give love very easily. They give respect very grudgingly. Very grudgingly. Men give respect, but they don't give love. They'll see, they'll see their wife and they'll think, that's a good woman. They won't do anything to, what's it called, validate. What? Validate. validate. Validate, that's the word. Uh, they won't do anything to validate her. They won't, like, give her a love letter or bring her roses or, you know, uh, call her in the middle of the day. Get, you know, what? Give compliments. give compliments. You know, those kinds of things. They won't, won't do that. You know, won't, won't stop looking at porn. <laughs> won't, you know, all those things. I don't know. But he'll respect her and say, hey, and so a woman comes to this conclusion of how the hell do you respect me when you're still looking at porn? Once again, because women don't think like men. Whereas in a man's brain, he sees no no problem with that hypocrisy. None. He says, eh, yeah, I respect you. See what I mean? And uh, so that's the struggle that will always repeat itself over and over and over again. What does the gospel tell us to do? Women, I mean, husbands, love your wives. Then what does it tell, tell the wives to do? Wives, submit to your husband. Instead of being a thorn in his side and always always saying snide things and contradicting him on everything that he says and fighting him on everything that he says and going behind him and talking bad about him to his kids, instead of all of that, submit to him. Now, what does that mean? Does that mean, oh, you you are my master. You you tell me what, how to live and breathe. No, that's not what submit means. It means be submitted to him, respect him. 
give give him give him the leadership of the home that he deserves. And I will tell you this: that when a woman is unable to give the man the leadership in the home, there will always be a conflict. They are more likely to have to have an adulterous affair later on, and the kids will grow up not respecting the, respecting the dad. This is a problem that will always come up because it comes back down: who runs the household, who makes the final decision. See what I mean? And it always has to come back to somebody carries the weight. And you think, well, I, I don't want to be told by told what to do by some man. Here's the thing. The leader is the one who's responsible, which means the leader is the one who bears the punishment. Who did God specifically single out as not hearing their prayers in a marriage situation? Men. The same men that he put in charge of the household are, are responsible for loving their wives and, and treating them with care, or else God doesn't hear their prayers. He didn't say that to women. Now, in today's culture, it might fit because women have grown a little bit more, in some ways, more dominant. But in, in other ways, especially in Roman and Greek society, not necessarily. Can I just interrupt you? Yeah, go ahead. Sometimes, sometimes you know, I was thinking this week that the women and women are supposed to be the ones who do things for the men and not the men. Which is a bad thing. Especially when the woman sees herself as the um, spiritual leader of the household when that's specifically given to the man. That's a bad sign. That's not, not on the woman, I mean, for the guy. But I will say this. If you're with, with a woman who always is dominant and always has to, you know, give her two cents about something, uh, ex nay, end the relationship. Get out of it. Get out of Dodge fast. When there, when there's a woman who, who is what, – what, what people don't understand when they're, when they're dating is when there's a woman who's dominant that you're dating, it gets worse when you're married. And she starts trampling on you when you're married. Like – People don't get this. You don't marry the person you date. You know what I mean? People people hop the gun. They they go from we're meeting, we met, we date, we marry. Instead of like whoa, maybe maybe like we met for a little bit. Maybe after I've known her for a year or two, then we date for a little bit. Kind of maybe see how that works, and then we marry. People get in too big of a hurry. Like like their life is going to be over if they don't marry in like five days. <laughs> Anyways, and it, then they, it's doomed to failure. It's doomed to to divorce. It, it, it's the only way that it can work out. And, and <sighs> anyways, but also to be men, we are told very very clearly in First Corinthians sixteen to be men. What does that mean? It means to be firm and hold the line, stand fast, be of courage. That's what it means. <clears throat> so we see that it isn't a sin to be a man. Rather, it's a sin to let your carnal nature, your you know, just getting mad at everything, yelling at everybody, attacking everybody. That is the bad part. Um, so when in Galatians it says that there's no longer male or female, what does that mean? It means that it's not doesn't mean transgender, nor does it mean that there are no gender roles in this life. Rather, that we can all receive redemption, male or female, we can all receive redemption. Women don't become men. There, there was this idea, this Gnostic teaching that women had to become men to be to be brought into the kingdom. No, in the new kingdom, there is no longer male or female. And what that means is that we all uh, can find redemption. Um, so God definitely did create us as separate. So what is toxic femininity? If we know what toxic masculinity is and we know what feminism is, what's toxic femininity? Well, the thing is, toxic femininity is oftentimes ignored. It, it, and there's this idea, it's all men's fault that, that, that women are so upset so that that gives women a, a privilege, a, a, the free will to or the, the right to act however they want because they've been mistreated. And here's the thing. That produces toxic femininity. These are women who are gossips, men-haters who complain and belittle men, the rebels without a cause who expect men to support their movement, troublesome malcontents. They're always dissatisfied. And as I've said before, there will all, there will eventually be blowback that's not a good idea for this kind of direct challenging. It's just not a good idea, um, especially since most of it is based on, on misinformation, you know, like, um, women aren't women aren't aren't presented fifty percent in in every single job, and it's like, well, that's because there's a lot of jobs that women don't want to do, women wouldn't be good at, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Men and women aren't aren't paid the same thing. Well, that's because they don't do the same thing. Like for instance, did you know that male Olympians are paid more than female Olympians because they do more? Do you know which one brings in more money, the men's basketball or the women's basketball? Men's basketball. Men's basketball. Women's basketball doesn't bring in hardly anything, if anything. So why would they get paid the same as men when men are the ones who are earning more money in basketball? Like, see what I mean? Like, that doesn't make sense. 
why why would you pay somebody the same if they're not doing the same job? Like obviously there's there this isn't the this isn't the way with every single job, duh. You know, but for the most part, women and men do have equal pay. Like for instance, if you go down to McDonald's, you're gonna get paid the exact same thing as the, as the dude working next to you if you're a girl. It's actually illegal for them to charge differently. So, you know, that's not once again a rebel without a cause trying to find something that's just not not really there. I mean, yes, there are some some cases still out there of of, of stuff. You know, absolutely. But this idea that it's out just is just behind every corner is just, just not true. Whereas men can hold their own, women can't. Nothing to bring unity and mutual growth here. This is all about getting revenge. Well, because men have mistreated me, it's like this is not good. This is a bad idea. We shouldn't get as Christians. We shouldn't be getting involved with this. We shouldn't be be getting in this male male versus women fight thing that's going on. This is it's not a good idea, guys. It's not going to end well. Feminism seeks female superiority and dominance, not equality. Men are so stupid. They man they mansplain everything. We don't need their chivalry. And then if you don't agree, well, you're just stupid. You're a, it was a misogynist. Everybody's a misogynist nowadays. Um, so movies then are focused on women, woman power and uh, often do so at the cost of making men look like idiots. Have you guys seen the new Kenobi show? You have? Okay. Well, Kenobi is a, is a bumbling moron who has no idea how to do anything, and he has to be told what to do by a little eight-year-old girl because he's too incompetent and stupid to figure out himself. Uh, the Book of Boba Fett. Uh, he, Boba Fett literally does nothing, sits on his throne all day, and he has to be ex has to have things explained to him by this by this young girl uh, mercenary who has zero experience. When we all know that Boba Fett has had years of experience, he was raised to it by his father Jingo, and he has to have things explained to him by this inexperienced girl. But that's the way these these new movies are. Watch any new show on Disney Plus, any new movie on Disney Plus. It's all about woman power. The men are completely stupid and incapable of doing even the simplest of tasks. They need everything explained to them. They're too weak and stupid. And so it's like, okay, so this is bringing, bringing health to the scene. I, I think that we could have had more complex characters than that. You, you know what I mean? Like, I think that we could have written some better characters. There's a movie called Wolves on Disney. Uh, yeah, there'll be more. Don't worry about it. If you miss this one, there'll be another one just like it. Just give it a little more time. And all the women will be completely carbon copies of each other you know when you can't point at a female character and say where was their growth how did they develop as a character where were their flaws and you can't point to one single thing you know that's a problem like ray ray on the new star wars did, what 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 hero what hero journey did she take how was she a better person at the end than at the beginning she wasn't she never went on on a on a, on a character building and She's the same Ray from episode seven as nine. Like she hasn't, she had no flaws. She was just mistreated. Those aren't flaws. It's being mistreated. Like that's that's Cinderella, right? Like she was mistreated. Okay, yes, I understand. We, we've got the sympathy factor, but nobody's perfect. And you painted her as the perfect person, who everybody just mistreats. And then she has no character development. It's the same bland thing over and over and over again. Give us something new. Anyways. <sighs> If men would take more responsibility for their actions, women probably wouldn't say this as much. I will say that. And that's 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 a problem from 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 men. Men have made a habit over the past couple, probably about forty years now, of well not acting like men. And then women get get pissed off and they're like, oh, I wonder why women are acting so busy. Oh, well, gee, I wonder why. Um, so not only do men usually resort to blows and violence, they don't feel as bad about it as a woman does, and they can make peace with it a little bit easier. Um, Murderers, for instance, um, murderers and rapists are usually men, for instance. Domestic violence is more common with men than women. And you could say that that is toxic masculinity. Men misusing their manness. It's masculine to stand your ground and not back down and do the impossible through power, but it's irresponsible and immature when it's not pointed in the right direction and controlled, as is often in the case in immature men and mentally traumatized men. I was watching a comedian, his name was Bill Burr. Um, if you guys ever heard him, he's a little bit intense. He's got a lot of cussing. He's got a lot of opinions about a lot of things. However, there is one thing that he said that I, that I definitely was, was laughing at. Comedian Bill Burr um, made fun of how there's, um, somebody made this comment that there's never a reason to hit a woman. And this made, me laugh. this made, this made him laugh. And he said, yeah, there, there are reasons to hit a woman, but you, you, don't, you don't do it. You know, and I was... He, he brought up the thing about, okay, so you, you, you get to the scene, 
you know, and, oh, he, bam, he hits his wife. Okay, yeah, that's bad. Send him to jail. Okay, yeah, but what happened before that? And he said, what? I, I'm just bringing up the question. The way he said it was really funny. Like, um, I, I don't know if this guy really is sexist, but he did raise a, raise, a, raise a valuable point. You know, there are reasons to hit women, duh, just like there's reasons to hit men. That, that's not the issue. The issue isn't, is there a reason to hit a woman? The, the reason is you don't hit a woman. You see the difference? And uh, it, it's a very valuable point. Um, see what women do and they do this often when, when people get married too um, women will oftentimes say and keep saying these really cutting remarks to men and keep pushing them and keep pushing them and the man eventually loses control because here's the thing and remember this everybody has a breaking point everybody so they keep pissing them off and pissing them off until until the guy gets mad and he, d he doesn't have anything else to offer to the girl in a way of fi uh, retort so he punches her in the face that's something that, well, that's definitely something that happens quite frequently. Well, why can't both sexes be capable in their own way? As Christians, we need to be okay with this idea that men are capable in their own way, and women are capable in their own way. That takes us to a very important, important little idea here. A friend I had posted this. Full offense, but if your son lays awake at night wishing he was dead because you insist he's your daughter, or if your daughter lays awake at night wishing she was dead because you insist she's your son, you have failed as a parent. So there are there are eight points I have with this, and I'm going to go through them very quickly. First off, transgender operations do not increase life joy or life contentment. A healthier option is to get mentally ill people the help that they need. Rather than rather than agreeing with their mental mental illusion, you know, rather than that, help them help them work through it. Number two, if your child is thinking this, they need more. Uh, they, they definitely need some more active parenting where they can talk and be heard. A healthy place to start if your kid is is doing something like this is by um, talking through what a girl is. Because a lot of times where people don't even know. In fact, I believe it was Matt Walsh. I believe it was Matt Walsh who brought up, who did a documentary a little while back, uh, What is a Woman? I think it was him. And in it, he, he was talking with this transgender man who was saying that, that he was a woman. And so then Matt Walsh said, so what is a woman? And the guy said, well, I can't explain to you what a woman is. And he said, <laughs> right, right there's the issue, like, if your child is thinking this, chances are they just need it just because you don't have a relationship with them. I guarantee you, you start giving them more time and energy, talking to them, read them stories, you know, include them in your life, you know, have, be real with them. And in a couple months, I guarantee you that they're not going to feel like that anymore. That's that's not natural for a kid to feel like that. People are, are, are missing this big thing with transgenderism and, and homosexuality. It's a sign of a deep emotional wound. It's not a normative behavior. It's not a normative behavior. It, when you're when you are a teenager, it is normal, normal for everybody, to be curious about their sexuality. You play with your body. You want to play with other people's bodies of both sexes. It doesn't make you bi. It doesn't make you gay. It's a natural curiosity that happens. And then you grow out of it. Except if you've gone through very severe trauma, which. Right there, there should be a sign when you have a full-grown adult who is still stuck in this. Warning! There's something wrong here that needs to be addressed. So often what they mean, um, what, what a child means, is that they want to play like a girl does, or they want the attention that the girl is getting, or they were put in a traumatic event that scared them, possibly a sign of molestation. If your little boy is saying, I think I'm a girl, right then the first thing you should check into is molestation. If you are an active parent in this child's life, you give them the attention and love that they need, and they're still saying something like this, you probably have molestation on your hands. Like This is not a normative behavior in, ch in children. Number three, thoughts like these are not normative, as I just said, especially in children. Be careful about labeling, especially for a natural sexual discovery. There, there's actually a, a historical figure, her name was Anne Frank from the Holocaust. She was not gay. Okay, She was curious about her body and sexuality, and she mentions it in like one journal article entry. And so what Netflix did is they really hopped on that 
And they made it into where she was a gay character. All because she had questions about kissing one of her girlfriends and having her friend touch her boob. That was it. She was just curious about her sexuality. That's what happens when you're a teenager. It's an awkward time of life. Uh, most uh, preteens and teens are. You outgrow it. To label it and operate it without understanding it is is na um, is natural is a terrible mistake. So your your kid says, "Oh, I think I'm a girl." So you just go and have them take pills and cut off their wiener. That's a terrible mistake. First off, they're too young to make that kind of decision. Second off, they're just exploring. Just you know, validate them, be there with them, ask them questions. What do you mean? What does it feel like to be a girl? How do you know what it feels like to be a girl? You know, all these different things. Have them think about these things, especially when the media is constantly telling people, hey, you can be a boy or a girl, whatever you choose. And it's like, well, maybe this needs to be more of something you're having a conversation with your child. Number four, there is zero scientific evidence to say we are different sexually than our bodies are. Nothing. Well, I don't feel like a boy. Okay. Maybe your idea of what a boy should feel like is wrong. Throwing that out there. We must learn to teach our kids to accept themselves and to be okay with not getting their way in life. This is a complete load of bull for those two reasons. First off, you in life you don't get your way. And second off, you have to learn to accept yourself. So why aren't we teaching that here? To learn contentment will always produce happiness, whereas chasing happiness will never make you happy. If you can learn to be content, you'll be happy. If you try your whole life to be happy, you'll never be happy. Hating yourself is a sure sign that something is wrong. Either drugs, molestation, trauma, lack of biblical foundation. Maybe you aren't doing a good job giving your kids any kind of biblical foundation for their life. <coughs> Being an adolescent is, is a cause of this. A lack of love from, from parents, that kind of stuff. Number five, sex transition is a permanent solution to a most often temporary problem. It, it's not like... You know, it's not like, oh, it's fine. No, when you go through sex transition, there are there are permanent things that happen to your body. None of that. But even if it was just a, horm a hormone that you were taking for a bit, especially when you take hormones before you have reached puberty, okay, this causes severe problems, increase of cancer, causes mental problems, all kinds of problems that do not go away because you did it when they were still developing. If they really are, let's say I'm 100% wrong, the Bible's wrong, God's lying, God's not real, whatever, and you can be a girl trapped in a boy's body, then it would make more sense to let them reach puberty, and if they still felt like that after 10 years, then let them let them do it. They're an adult. They can make their own decisions, whatever, even if it's a bad decision. I mean, that's that's the foundation of America. But this idea that, that, that kids should be doing this is just it's ludicrous. If your kid is crying themselves to sleep, that's a problem right there. And sex change isn't going to fix that. Kids go through confusing times that doesn't label them this or that. Also, treatments increase risk of cancer. I can't say this enough. Number six, it is more important that we teach our kids to think and help them deal with the nonsense being thrown at them than that we push our liberal agenda on children. I want to be inclusive and I want people to think that I'm a homophobe or transphobe. So because I want so bad for the people not to label me as that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push, push this on my kids. Or we could teach them to think for themselves. Throwing that out there. Number seven, most kids think in terms of play, not sex. If a boy feels like a girl, he's not thinking of sex. He's not thinking of gender. He's not thinking of, 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 of um, you know, sexual intercourse. He's thinking more in terms of play. They're, they haven't developed that level yet. Like, even, I'm not saying boys don't masturbate. That's not what I'm saying. I started at nine. I know someone who started at eight and seven. That's not what I'm saying at all. But they interpret the world in a different light. When you reach puberty, things change more. There's no other way I can say that. Like the way it makes more sense. We have to keep kids safe. That that's that should be our number one job. Not being even if even if we don't care about truth, we still have to keep kids safe. Not being like others is not necessarily bad. They belong, and it's okay to be different. If your boy doesn't feel like a boy, that doesn't make them make think that's not something that needs a sex change. It's just okay. So you don't feel like them. That's that's all right. We all struggle. That doesn't mean we give in. Didn't God... Th think about this. There's people who say, well, you know, how do I deal with this? Because God made my kid transgender. Well, think about this. Did God make the child molester too? He did. Did he 
make them give in to their child molestation less than their heart? No, he gave them that choice and they decided to give in. So if we can safely say the child molester shouldn't be touching kids, can't we also say the transgender shouldn't be cutting off his willy? Right? Now, there are some cases where things don't work out this clear, and I want to be absolutely upfront with you. If a boy develop, doesn't develop properly, he can ha he can be a boy and not have a penis. That can happen. I actually had a friend who uh, chromosome was a boy, but the penis, um, because the testosterone was not released, the penis did not form. So he didn't have, he, he had what looked like a vagina, and he grew up as a girl because they just assumed, because you don't get your kids a chromosome count when they get born. Uh, and um, so he had an an unworking vagina was what it was. It was not capable of getting pregnant. It was not uh, capable of sustaining a, a baby, a fetus at all, nothing. But he grew up as a, a, as a girl, and I believe he could be counted as a girl, and I know him as a girl. Okay. Now before you before you get too upset at me, li listen to what I'm saying here. Okay. I'm gonna call her she from here on. First off, she didn't have any sex changes. She didn't take pills. Second off, her body was supposed to release the, the testosterone. It did not release the testosterone. So the the critical st stage for reaching male pu puberty never happened. So the things that made him male never happened. You see what I mean? You know, I'm not. I'm not sure. I didn't. I didn't feel. And um, she married a, a, a guy. And I'm not sure about how I feel. I, if it was me, I would have stayed single just to avoid the whole thing. But I don't think she was sinning in marrying. And I don't really think that she was a boy. Let's, 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 fla let's flash back 10 years, okay? F f let's go 50 years. I'll, I'll put it as more in the... In the, in the it, it, back 50 years ago, it never would have been a question that she was a girl. She would have just been a girl that didn't have periods. She has boobs. She has what looks like a vagina. It never would have been in front. But now, because of the introduction of, of, of chromosomes and stuff, well, not introduction, but, you know, people studying those things more, more dominantly now, now we know that, well, she actually was a boy who just didn't develop into a boy. So it seems how she didn't really develop. It doesn't really, I feel like it doesn't really count as being a, you see what I mean? I don't think, I don't think God would count it as yeah. Like yeah. And I don't, I really don't feel like it's wrong to classify her as a, as a girl. I mean, she obviously doesn't have a penis. Right. So. Right. Well, the penis isn't the only thing that makes you a girl. I mean, a boy. I'm sorry, a boy. Because, I mean, if you cut off your penis, does that make you a girl? It's the organs. Right. Well, it's yeah. not just your organs. It's genetic. It's not just genetic. There's so many different things that make it, that make you a boy. Anyways, so, uh, <clears throat> accept your kid for who they are but also push them to be who they are meant to be a little boy thinks he's a girl talk listen explain support we are more than our sexual confusion they're making this thing where, where we we are our sexual identity and that's just not true a boy isn't and this is my last point on this a boy isn't a girl just because he thinks he is any more than a man is a bird if he thinks he is you can objectively know what is true because of science which is also what the bible says too god made us male and female just because a male, like I said, doesn't doesn't develop correctly doesn't mean that he's something else. We also shouldn't be surprised that the confused world lives confused. And we should lo love but not condone, nor should we try to offend. So what, let me unpack that. We should love people who are transgender, but we shouldn't condone the lifestyle of transgenderism, nor should we try to, nor should we try to offend them. Yeah, um, let's say Nicole was a boy who got a sex change, okay? Um, no. You're really a boy, you know. What are you doing? See what I mean? Like people in the world are gonna—they're gonna live by their own standards. We don't have to. Uh, we don't have to try and piss them off. It's okay to be confused and it's okay to struggle. It's okay to not have all the answers. And a lot of this is is is, is gonna sound like that. Um, so just a little bit more, and then we'll wrap up for the for the year. Next year we're gonna look at Mars attacks and or watch Mars attacks, and and we're gonna have a have a party and all kind of stuff. Okay. Then we'll start on Jeremiah the week after that. So what is it? A boy 
This is what makes a boy. XY chromosome. In a healthy male, there is an, there is an increase in testosterone and a fully formed male sex organ called the penis. In a girl, it's an XX chromosome. In a healthy female, there is an increase in estrogen and a fully formed female sex organ called the vagina. That's the normative thing. Uh, what if the sex organ is malformed? It is a physical abnormality, just like colitis or diabetes. It doesn't make you something else. It makes you something that was not developed properly. A boy who cuts off his penis and takes hormone pills is still a boy. Accept and do not ridicule. Really, guys, I want you guys to listen. As Christians, I'm trying to show you what our responsibility is in this whole thing that the, that the culture is so upset about, okay? You... It, 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 Accept people and do not ridicule, but don't accept the lie. See what I mean? You can accept a person without accepting their viewpoint. The world lives as the world does. That's just how it is. You can't expect them to be to live as Christians. Most of the most of the prophets, and we're going to look at this in January. Most of the prophets were sent to the church, not to the world. Most of them. As Christians, we accept what God says about us, not our insecurities, not nor what the nor what the world says. So if I feel like a girl, I'm going to base my base my my identity on what God says and not what I feel or what the world says. The culture tells us to respect women, but they can't tell us why why nor what a woman even is. I respect women too much to claim that a man is a woman is just not possible. They'll, and this is something that that should concern us and this is this is the other half of the coin where Christian parents need to get their butts in gear here. The LGBTQ+ plus community doesn't want to be left alone or accepted. They want to shove it down our throats, and they want to force it on our children, and they want our kids to start accepting these things as normative. And they're always pushing their, their sexual identity stuff on, onto our kids in their cartoons. That should be a warning sign. That's called grooming, guys. That, that's, a, that's a very bad thing. And when the child molester does it, it's like, oh, this is bad. Why aren't we getting concerned when Nickelodeon does it or when Disney does it? This is, this is bad. This is grooming children. We don't need our kids... Having the, having the transgender and LGBTQ plus community shove their their sexual things down our kids our kids throats they don't we we don't need that we need to step up and so I've already said about how we, how we need to find unity in, unity w between male and women male and female I've already said about how we need to be you know try loving to the transgender community without agreeing with them I, and, but now we need to go to another stage we need to protect our families against this kind of ideology. Um, I was at a bookstore and this trans comes up to us and just like is very like in our face and talking to our kids and stuff. And the the reason why they were doing it was because trans do this thing of like, oh, you have a problem with me? You have a problem that I'm trans? And they get all up in your face. I don't go into their face and say, what, you have a problem with me being straight? You know, but it's okay for them to do it to your face. See what I mean? Like there's this thing where we have to, we have to start, stop the bull crap and start protecting our, our kids. Um, so the Bible talks about weaker vessels, and, and let's get through this very quickly. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives, and treat them with respect as a weaker partner and as heirs with you uh, of the gracious gift of life, so that nothing will hinder your curse. So what may, what what does it mean that women are weaker? Well, we've looked at this. this. Physically, they're weaker. Socially, they're weaker. They can be shouted down, for instance. Emotionally, they're weaker. Though everyone struggles with feelings, men are more and women are more enslaved to their feelings. And when they go through their, their time of the month, they really get to be more um, emotionally led on everything. Um, I mean, for instance, when people are married, they're going to have a big fight once a month. Fact. And it's going to be instigated by the woman. Fact. Not every fight is going to be instigated by the woman. But that one will be. Promise you. Promise you. That's just a good example. Men have the ability to set a tone in the house that women don't have that ability. When a, when a woman has to, has to raise her children... Without a husband in the in the household, she's unable to carry on that man's responsibility. She can't fill the void. Same as when a man has to raise his children without the wife, he can't fill the void. They can't take each other's places. It it never happens. Men have the ability to set a tone. And women lack that. Men can change a woman's attitude by how they act over time. You know that? How you treat your wife over time, it will change and affect how they act. Most times that a woman divorces a man it's the man's fault from years back you might not you might not agree with me you don't have to how the man has acted over time has caused the woman to react in a certain way women are more reactive than men and over time it has led to the divorce even though the man is completely oblivious to the problem women are not capable of doing that they can't do that to a man 
But women can wear a man down in a different way. If they continually talk down to them, or they have to go elsewhere to find respect day after day after day after day, eventually they'll get tired of that and they'll fight back and divorce them. Or if a woman lets herself go and like doesn't even care about how she looks anymore. That too. Um, so, when a woman stop when a when a wife stops caring about how she looks and she just lets herself get all run down and just like nasty and the man's like really cares about that you know it's like well why don't you just exercise and she's like well you know I don't have time with all the kids and all this other stuff you know what I mean it becomes a point of conflict um, because the wife will always when people get married they will always have more weight in ten years than they did when they got married. So if you marry someone and they're already overweight, like they're gonna be, they're gonna be huge within ten years. If you if you marry someone who is a good weight, they will have extra fat. This is something that I, I don't get the problem with. I <coughs> I see it as if your wife gave up her her physical youth for the sake of bearing you children. I see that as a, like a sign of honor. You know what I mean? I see the stretch marks as a sign of honor. I like the stretch marks. It's like, okay, this is what you what you sacrificed for the sake of our of our children. I enjoy that. Not everybody enjoys that. Um, you know I mean, but then again, I, I I'm things naturally happen when you're when you grow up too. When you're a kid, like the the the, the college chicks, the teen, oh oh oh, you know, twenty year old, oh so hot. As you get older, you just kind of you start to mature and you start to like your older wife, and you don't really want the younger model. The guys who change out the wives for younger models are guys that really haven't matured. They're still, you know, still taking steroids, driving the big obnoxious tri truck or motorcycle. <laughs> Whatever. Um, okay, so men can change a woman's attitude by how they act over time. I already said that. Whereas men often get mad and impatient with how the wife is acting. Most divorces are more the man's fault. I already said that. Part of men maturing often sadly involves becoming harder and less tolerant the older that they get. And this is something, as a man, you're going to always have to face. You guys over there, you're always going to have to deal with this. You're going to become more and more intolerant, and you're become, going to be more and more hard. Mm. I, thought, I, thought, I thought men got less hard than Most of them don't. Some of them, some of them soften, but most of them don't. Like, here's a good example of my dad, right? Um, when, when he was younger, wow, he was, like, really, like, short-tempered and stuff all the time. He's drastically changed. However, there are some things that he's just gotten older he has a harder time accepting. You know what I mean? Like we'll do, we'll go through something in like our training, and he'll change something intentionally. And, oh, okay, I'm not gonna do that anymore with how I do like my PowerPoint or something like that. And then after like uh, four or five months, he'll go back to how he was doing it. And like, well, you know, Dad, I thought we weren't gonna do this anymore. Oh, you see what I mean? And he's like kind of become more, more like set in your ways. You know what I mean? And it's something that just happens naturally. It's something you have to fight as you get older. Um. So obviously, though, with the whole comments about divorce being predominantly the man's fault, uh, you were doing says women are still responsible for their own own actions. I'm just saying a woman is not strong enough to consistently have a good attitude when a man doesn't contribute to the marriage. A woman, a woman is not not strong enough to do that. Like, if you expect your wife to consistently be faithful to you when you put nothing forth to the marriage, that's just that's not gonna happen. Um. So women are not less, they're not unsaved, which Mormonism actually teaches that women are unsaved. They need their husband's past grace to get into heaven, so just point that out. Um, if you guys ever want to become Mormon. Uh, um, women are not unimportant, they're just different. And the thing is, men oftentimes lose patience when women act like women. So, the biblical woman, I know we've all read Proverbs where it talks about the different things with women. Um, that she's supposed to be here. Here's the thing. Women are not supposed to be perfect. They're not supposed to be... Um, uh, w women are not supposed to be p uh, perfect. They're not incapable. Um, they don't have to be passive. A woman does not have to be passive. She does not have to be um, uh, unaccomplished. And she doesn't have to only be good good for, and good with kids. Um, does any, And I'll just stop right here and just say, are there any questions? Because uh, we have, I think, two more slides to get through. I have two. I have like a few questions, but go I ahead. Want to see if I'm doing questions. No, go ahead and do your questions because I want to kind of break from the monotony here. Okay. Um, We've been at this le lecture for like an hour and fifteen minutes, guys. Yeah, well, I, I kind of have to. Well, it's the last thing of the year, and I don't want to drag it into the new year, and I don't want to don't want to <laughs> take away from the movie night next next week. So. Um, first question is that I know you mentioned like the connection to your 
and like you need to go here for this mm-hmm. but you know for my story it's not about the the life you used to be like who you actually are mm. but what about how do you how do you reconcile that with like the births your forecast of that like who gives an example and like like you said you want to like start start from even on your own a lot of that is context right so we could do a study on that and you would see it's not quite how it sounds Mm -hmm. but yeah so basically the idea is that she showed her husband um honor and that's that's the basic idea there um once again though there's a lot being lost in, in in context there and if you just look at it from a modern eyes you might say oh uh, wife has to call her husband master or sirs or you know what and that's that's not the idea at all because I, I grew i grew up in a household that still had that kind of side question but like over dominant yeah yeah and then the second question was like when it comes to like i know i know like your spouse is your spouse but you know and i'm not i'm not saying specifically but in general do you think that men should have I think there's no reason for them not to. No reason not to. No. No. I mean, it, there's this idea that I have to be good enough to be married, and that's just stupid. You're like, you're never going to be good enough to be married. Like, just don't worry about it. Like, it's just like salvation. Oh, I have to be good enough for God to accept me. Don't worry about it. He's already accepted me. You know what I mean? Like, if we had to be perfect for, for, for that, nobody would ever have kids. The men, people would have died out a long time ago. Yeah, don't even worry about that. Um, I would say that... Uh, the best way to get over porn is to heal what's in here. Two people who look at porn, most two men who look at porn predominantly, you just have to figure out which one you are. The insecure man who is just not real confident in himself, in his abilities, in his knowledge, in his life experience. The, the, the only way you can do that is by gaining, gaining security. And that doesn't come through relationships anyways. That comes through having a job, having failures, having dreams that you try for that don't work out, and still having more dreams, you know, trying to work your way forward. And the the second man who looks at porn is the one who's perpetually dissatisfied in life. The one who is never content, is never good enough, that they have to get a bigger car, a bigger house, bigger family, bigger this, bigger, you know, everything else has to be bigger and better. So you just have to figure out which one you are, and then you can figure out how, how to heal your heart, and once you once you heal your heart, the the por- the, the the lust for the porn goes away. Mm-hmm. Plus, another thing is is with age things change. Here's I'll give you a good example of that. When I was thirteen or fourteen, man, I I I was I w- I had it for pretty much anything that was even resembled a girl. If there's a shapely tree, I would want to want to get busy with it. But, you know, as I got older, it's like, it's not like your sex drive dies. It just, it kind of matures. You know, you don't have to constantly be sexually gratified. Like when you're a kid, you can just do little things like, oh, now right. you're going to punish me for this. And then when you're a kid, you can masturbate like three times a day. Oh, and when you get older, you're just like, eh, no, I'm okay. I'm now, obviously, there are some times when masturbation is a warning sign of, of something that definitely needs some counseling. So a good example of that would be... Um, there was a guy who was in war, and he was going through PTSD, and it was undiagnosed. And so he became a salesman, and so he'd masturbate at every single house before he went in to sell. He would go to his car, masturbate, go to the house, try to sell. No, go to his car, drive to the next house, masturbate, go up. Every single one. Very serious problem. Now, obviously, once they figured out about the PTSD, they were able to fix it, and the masturbation problem was all on its own. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm assuming that you haven't been to war and seen people get blown off and no. stuff. You know, I'm guessing it's not PTSD. So. <laughs> okay, um, were there any other questions? No. Okay, so the biblical woman isn't this, this woman who has to be perfect at everything. It's not this woman who has to be like this, this marker of, of, of feminineness. And uh, it's not this woman who has to stay at home with the kids all day, you know, oh, knitting and crocheting. Actually... That, that chapter in Proverbs that talks about the wife, the godly wife, it actually talks about her going out and, and, and having a job and, and doing things for the good of other people. It doesn't say she has to stay at home all day and all this stuff. Like, I don't know where people got that. Um, it's not supposed to be a competition between men and women. Our sin nature makes it a competition and it makes it abusive. Where the man has to dominate the woman, the woman has to dominate the man. 
For a woman to submit to her husband should mean something along the lines of this. I will not talk bad about my husband to him, to our kids, or to anyone else. I will do my best to be there for my husband. And I will not ridicule him for his, for his failures and weaknesses. That's what submission looks like. This is what we think submission looks like. He has a say in all the, finan all the financial matters. I can't say anything against it. He has a say in everything that happens with the kids. He has the final say with how we raise the kids. He has the final say with... That's not submission. Okay, that's that's dominance. Like, that's... that's No, that's, that's no. Well, that's not where it was meant to be. That's taking a biblical principle, putting it kind of cocaine, and then removing it far from its context. Anyways. So... Um, modern day feminism teaches that women only have value as compared to men I already mentioned this she did it no matter what men said women have an easy time loving a hard time respecting not a busy body not, uh, uh, being submitted to her husband being a helper um, well let me just break this down I'm kind of just going through it first off let me just say that women have an easy time loving a hard time respecting women are told to respect their husbands not to love them, because the love is natural. They don't have to work at that, but they do have to work at the respect of it. Um, women are specifically told not to be a busybody. That's where you just go around spreading gossip and rumors, and you know, doing not really accomplishing anything, but complaining about a lot. Um, submitted to her husband. That's that's supposed to be a sign of what a god, a biblical woman is. She's supposed to be a helper. Not not in the sense of what we think of as a helper. For instance, the Holy Spirit is referred to as our helper. Does that mean that the Holy Spirit is submitted to us? Yet somehow, when it's applied to women, women have this idea that they can't be anything unless it's under the under the dominance of the man. It's like, well, no, that's not what a helper means. A woman is most satisfied when she's helping somebody else. Women don't get that same thrill that men do from, from dominating and from, from being the best at everything. Women, women feel a lot more joy in their life when they feel like they're contributing into another person. This is why women make, make such great social workers. Because they feel like they're contributing to somebody else. No, but it also means that they fall harder when they're a social worker because it's more trauma for them and it's hard for them to, for them to cope with you know, uh, a bad uh, counseling or a bad, a bad event. Um, women uh, are, are great encouragers. And they're meant to be encouragers, but they are still meant to be in control of their tongue. They're meant to be modest. Now, why does it specifically single out women for being modest and not men? Especially nowadays, we live in a sex crazed culture, you know, like where the rock takes off his shirt and all the women are like, ah. Oh. But um, historically, women have been able to use their body to get what they want. You know <laughs> what I mean? Um, they have been more um, in danger of showing the little chest. And men are way sexual, so just a little bit of chest goes a long way. <laughs> Do you need me to wait through that? Uh, women, women, though, are not meant to be a man's plaything. They're not meant to not have a say in finances. Of course, they should be included in the finances. They, 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 um, this whole the whole sex thing, right? Like, oh, women, they can't say no to sex. Well, by that principle, you could never say yes to sex either. Like, that just doesn't, that doesn't fit. Um, th that verse definitely was has been taken far out of, out of context. Uh, but with that being said, I will say this, that if you want a happy marriage, don't, don't get used to saying no all the time to your spouse about everything. That would be a point that you don't. Um, uh, women aren't meant to be ignored. They are meant to be. Um, um, they're like women are meant to be more like a house plant. And what I mean by that um, is that you, you have to care for it and groom it and, and make sure every single day that it's getting what it needs. That kind of stuff. It's, they're delicate, and uh, men men can go like weeks and, and be okay, but um, things kind of add up. Yeah, we're like cactuses, just in more ways than one. <laughs> Poking things and yeah, no. <laughs> pissing people off. Anyways. Um, women are also not meant to be just house cleaners who need a man to be happy. I mean, for instance, I do, um, I do, all, I wash and dry all the laundry in this house. Yeah. No. 
A lot of women want to volunteer to do what men have a hard time doing, and they do it well, but ruin it by constantly complaining and criticizing. In the same way, a man will do a good job providing, but ruin it with his crappy attitude when he comes home, with his inattention to his wife and kids when he comes home, with his laziness and helping around, helping around the house when he gets home. Men should be careful about tempting women too, but men by, by nature are more sexual than women are. And uh, yeah, it's right that women should have to watch out and be on guard, but there are some men who are monsters, and you have to kind of be smarter than them. What I mean by that is, okay, so when a woman gets gets raped, whose fault is it? Always the woman. No. Always, always the raper's fault. It's always the raper's fault. However, with that being said, there's a lot of monsters out there. you you got to be smarter than them. So what I do is I'm going to tell my kids, my girls this too. Don't go to bars by yourself. Don't hang out too late. Don't park in an unlit area. Always have your phone on. Always let people know where you're going. Why? Well, men sh women shouldn't have to do that. Yeah, I agree. Women shouldn't have to do that. But they do. Something else <laughs> but they do. They just carry them like keys and between their fingers. Yeah. And if you punch somebody, that's going to hurt. Yeah, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Um, I actually had a friend. Actually, I had a friend who I've disagreed with at great lengths. One thing that she told me, she told me that it, the woman, always believe the woman in a, in, a, in a sexual harassment claim. I was like, no, that's stupid. If there's no no proof, you don't believe it. No, you always believe the woman. We, are, we argued a lot about that. Well, she was at a bar. I think she might have been working there. I'm not sure. And she came out. It was nighttime. And uh, one of the drunk guys followed her out and tried to rape her in the parking lot. She was, uh, she she knew um, self-defense. It didn't do jack crap, dude. She hit, she hit him in the nuts. Didn't do jack crap, dude. She uh, she was, was hitting him. I think she even might have had, I don't, I don't know about the taser, but either way, like, she was trained, and it didn't do anything. He must have been on drugs. No, he was very drunk. <laughs> very drunk. And yeah, my dad one time was drunk, and he shut his finger on the door. Uh, the fingernail even came off. And uh, I'm sorry, I won't, I won't describe any more of what happened. And okay, uh, okay. and he was drunk, so he didn't have any idea. ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Drunk people, they just they just get very stupid. Yeah. Anyways, and uh, so yeah, it, it's not right that women should have to watch out and be on guard. But here's the thing: there are, there are some men who are monsters, and, and you have to be smarter than them. Don't be in compromising places, dressed promiscuous, because men are pigs. Women women aren't like that. Okay, a guy can wear a, a, a tight fitting shirt, and a woman might even think thoughts like dirty thoughts, but she won't think the amount and the number. And I can't even describe how many different ways if a, when a woman dresses provocatively versus when a, a man does it. <laughs> no, uh, I'll just leave it there. But let me just say that you know, women, men are more more oriented like that. Um, women women are known for calling them pigs. Men are more, and, and the reason for that is because we have to be aroused in order to produce a baby. A woman does not have to be aroused to produce a baby. <laughs> Although, with that being said, I do have to tell a funny story about this, okay? That's just because this lesson has been so long. We have to break this up to something funny. But I, I know somebody who had a brother. I, I'm going to leave out names here. But <coughs> and the brother thought that women, when they get aroused, that their boobs get pointy. <laughs> it's funny, right? <laughs> Gracie just staring at me. <laughs> Anyways, um, so men think about sex all the time. I think that by one by one thing they, they said men think about sex once in every six seconds or something like that. Anyways, um, and uh, but also men have the ability to think about absolutely nothing. And women can do neither of those things. It is in impossible for women to do that. If, if, if a man's sitting there going like this, he can literally be thinking about absolutely nothing. Sometimes when I'm even talking, I'm not even thinking about something. But a woman? Not possible. It's physically impossible for a woman to do that. And uh, the only the only situation that I know of where a woman um, think of the, thinks about sex in a repeated and, 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 and <coughs> consuming type of way like a man, first off, she doesn't, she can't contain it like a man can. And the second thing I've had that with that person that I know is there was something that happened when they were younger um, that kind of sexually traumatized them. And so they became overly fixated on sex. 
So it was not a normative female behavior. It was a reactive feminine symptom. Mm -hmm. So kind of pointing that out. Okay, and the last thing I have to say about men being men and all this nonsense, okay? When faced with discomfort, women are more prone to withdraw. I make fun of Nicole, and I keep making fun of Nicole. Eventually, she's going to stop coming to the house. Men, on the other hand, withdrawal sometimes works, but more often, they're going to be stubborn. And they're going to be too stubborn and prideful. So maybe they'll laugh it off once or twice, and they'll say something back maybe the next time, and then eventually they'll start saying something mean back. And then eventually, they'll just get in the habit of they walk, and they just start saying something mean. They're more prone to be like that, whereas a woman would just withdraw. A man's stubbornness will keep them in a bad situation over and over again. Um, and then a man will lash out because uh, – I'm sorry, lash out at varying degrees and become more more intense degrees and whatnot. Um, and a good example of this, and I already mentioned this at the beginning of this, was I used to be a very passive person. And I used to – my whole thing was keep the peace, just make people not be mad. I got that from my mother. But um, as I was in ministry, I've been in ministry now 17 years, and being a father of five, there's been a lot of people – being excessively rude and trying to really push themselves on me. And I just started reacting. I got kind of fed up with it. One example, I was, uh, there was this problem maker at the church and they were trying to go, trying to goad me into doing something that was wrong. And so I said, well, I'm going to have to talk to my wife about this. And, oh, be a man, decide, just say, say if you're going to do it or not. And, uh, well, obviously, being a man isn't making a decision without your wife. That, that has no, that has nothing to do with being a man. Well, you have people saying those kinds of rude things continually over and over again, being in ministry, and you just kind of start to lose your patience, and it's not that's not a good thing. But it did awaken my more manly side, uh, and uh, so I started reacting to things, and I'm more prone now to lose my temper and uh, to start hitting on things. Uh, I remember there was well, there was a day a little while ago that uh, probably about. Uh, it was probably this year, actually. And I was just too stressed and I was real frustrated. So I went to the back and I just started beating the crap out of this dog food. It was a bag of dog food. Dog food flying all over the house. I'm just beating the crap out of it. I hated it over and over again, like a punching bag. And uh, I did that for about uh, five minutes. Dog food everywhere. And I'm like, okay. And I came back out and I said, yeah, stop doing that, Micah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I. I he just goes, oh my God. <laughs> He's like, whoa. <laughs> No, but I, I didn't I didn't hurt my children or anything, you know. The other thing you're doing is fucking No, I think I would have broken the pillow and I like my pillows too much. See, now I have to relearn and I have to grow. And it's not wrong to defend yourself, okay? It's wrong to be rude. And I'll give you a good example of this. Um, there was, a, there was a, a woman that came to our church and she literally was a man-hater. She hated men. And uh, it was always a man's fault. She was always saying snide things about men. Um, you know, they got, she got a divorce with, with her husband, uh, two, two different husbands, and it was always the men's fault, and all these different things. You know, a man-hater. And uh, she uh, did a bunch of stuff. It was co constantly causing problems, and I kept my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. That's what men do. You keep your mouth shut, and you go through it, and you keep acting like a man. If you if you only act, act like a man so long as, you know, you have reason to act like a man, you're not really acting like a man. So she... Um, Finally, she did something that I really had to address, and uh, she was trying to take other people's jobs from them. And so I went to her and I said, "No, we're we're not going to do that. That's not your job." And she said, "Well, the pastor said he wants to send it." I said, "No, we don't. We don't have a rule about that. So I'm sorry about the confusion, but no, I, I don't do that anymore." And uh, she got really, really pissed off and mad, and uh, I kept I stood my ground. I did not get I did not get mean at all, and uh, she ended up eventually, you know. She left the church after that because she wouldn't be told what to do. I didn't say anything wrong. Everybody, all the leadership knows what I said and how I said and who I said it to and when I said and all that. And uh, that's a good example of what I mean. It, it was okay to defend. It's okay to do what's right, but don't do it with a bad attitude. In, uh, in non-traditional relationships, there's always a dominant one, especially over time. And what I mean by that is if you look at homosexual relationships, there's always a dominant one. And that shows us um, that shows us uh, the, that there is meant to be a male-female kind of compatriot that happens. Yeah. So let me just wrap up a few things here. Don't be a pushover, guys. Don't don't be a pushover, but 
stand your ground correctly. Um, try if, when you have a problem, go face to face with it, not through text. The only time to text when you guys are dealing with a problem is do it only if you're dealing with someone who's going to lie about what you're saying, and uh, and that way you can have a, a paper trail. But typically, especially guys, go to and go and face the problem face to face. If, if you're having a conflict with someone, go face to face with them and really talk it out and uh, work it out that way. It's so, uh, usually the best way. So uh, another uh, a good example of this is is um, I had to stop ranting about Michelle Lujan Grisham. Um, she's corrupt, and I had to just stop talking about it. But I still stand for morality. I just don't talk about her anymore. Um, the Bible talks about women ruling during immoral times, and the reason why it says that is, first off, not because women ruling is inherently bad, but because men are weak and not doing their job, so the women have to do it for them. Okay, so what that looks like in New Mexico. New Mexico started off with male governors in the early 1900s, until Richardson, if you remember Richardson, he was a very corrupt and weak male governor. So then what happened? Then what happened was Susanna took over, and she was a very good female governor. And then we got our current governor, Grisham, who was a weak female governor. She was a very um, illogical and um, corrupt female governor. So is it wrong for there to be a female governor? No, there's nothing wrong with there being a female governor. The problem is, is that women are more prone to become leaders when men are too weak to do the job and they're not doing it correctly. Um, so New Mexico is a weak state, lasts on everything, including education, uh, with a very weak male populace. The, the men of New Mexico tend to be excessively weak. They, they, are, they tend to be drug addicts. They tend to be um, inactive fathers. Not all of them, obviously. Um, they beat their wives. They do drugs. They leech off the system. They throw baby fits. If you look at statistically, men in New Mexico do not rank very high. Um, women can obviously be good leaders, but they usually only rise to the occasion after weak male leadership. Most women won't start it, but they'll go when there's a problem. You know what I mean? They most women won't. How how many how many of the states um, after 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 there could be women governors? How long was it before? before there were female governors. Well, actually, quite a while. Why? Well, for the most part, because there were already f people who were capable of doing it. Strong male leadership. When, when, that, when, women, when men stop being men, women rise to the occasion. That's what the Bible talks about. It's saying that it's a bad thing when women are leaders, be, not because it's a bad thing for women to be leaders, but because when men are too weak to do their job, women have to fill in the gap. That's what the Bible is talking about. And I think that it's very would be very wise to keep that in mind. That um, so I've tried to look at this from every single, every single um, aspect that I humanly possibly could, guys. And I don't want to look at this conversation again. I never want to talk about transgenderism or homosexuality or male, the role of male and female ex exclusively again in, in the end. I will do it if you make me. But I'm hoping that after an hour, after almost two hours, I've covered every single thing you could possibly have a question on. Did anybody have any questions I didn't answer? No? Okay. So don't be known for political divisiveness. Don't be known for rude comments on Facebook, for nonsense posts and rants and all this nonsense. Christian men and women are not supposed to be living as the culture lives. We are supposed to live according to grace. Peacemakers, patient, following the example of Christ, not quarrelsome. As God calls us, so we go. Not in rebellion, but in godly humility. Does everybody understand all that? Yes, sir. Okay, because we are done, guys.